Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Welcome to Share Talk. Today we've got Greg Harmon Dayon, who has been a consultant to both De Beers and Anglo American. And Greg is going to be speaking at the Minds and Technology event in Toronto between the 2nd and 4th of October later this year. Welcome, Greg. Hi, John. So you're going to be talking about innovation in the modern mind, but could you give us a bit of an overview of the kind of work that you've done for both De Beers and Anglo-American? Yeah, certainly. Just recently, De Beers has launched the new GK mine in Northwest Territories, approximately 250 kilometers northeast of Yellowknife. It's a very remote mine with harsh conditions. And as a project manager, my responsibility was to deliver the infrastructure components required to get the mine live and operational. Um, at its highest peak, it housed approximately 600 people in a construction phase with all the required facilities and amenities uh, needed to conduct your business, uh, everything from a full-on SAP system through to being able to FaceTime with your friends and family back home. Um, in addition to all the mining technical systems involved, uh, with respect to annual American being the parent body of the beers and the parent company, um, the responsibility and accountability there was to ensure that their systems adhered to the standards. And being a new mine, it pushed the envelope in certain areas as to what technologies were adopted and, uh, and presented as the new standard back to annual American keeping in mind that the GT mine became operational well within two years and is now active and running uh, at full capacity. So what, what kind of efficiencies are you putting in place to, it, to ensure that these mines sort of return value? Well, to start off with, uh, you know, you focus on your core competencies. Uh, from a technology perspective, being in the business of uh, personal rather than corporate communications becomes quite a challenge. The very first thing that we did was to separate and differentiate. We almost went to a, we went to what we would almost consider a hoteling kind of service where your personal um, communications and emails would be subscribed over a private network, uh, a corporate network, so that you're not mixing and intermingling the two types of data and traffic. So we went to a third company, part of, we went to a third company where we implemented the system based on, uh, based on their, um, their infrastructure and our design, and we basically implemented a hoteling service of sorts for your personal uh, communications, whether it be email, uh, voice, video, whatever the case may be, it was all done on a private network. Uh, that gave us the opportunity to, obviously, the remote location bandwidth and power is a, is a very critical uh, challenge. So what we were able to do is separate those and alleviate the pressures on the corporate network which would be in quite a bit of demand uh, when it came to the 32 or 33 applications, the technical system applications that had to run in real time or near real time. Things like obviously SAP, um, uh, you had you have your mining technical systems, you had your plant based systems, you had your monitoring and, and your reporting systems. Uh, you know, all all very dependent on a smooth and always available networks in place to conduct the day-to-day -day operations in business. So that was one of the very first things that we did. And the second thing we did is we, we put together a strategy and plan for the growth and migration of, of, the, of the camp as it went from just construction to pure full um, operation. And so you time you timed your technology properly too. So you start off with satellite communications and then you grow into microwave communications and then you grow into uh, uh, other various range extending services that would allow you to capture more and more data across across the line. Um, and the third thing that we did was obviously put a strategy forward for what a modern mine should look like. I'm not talking about the mine of the future. The mine of the future is far, far more advanced than what our modern mine is, but our modern mine is, is basically the capabilities of of what type of technology today with respect to IoT, with respect to um, just doing things the smarter way rather than the try to be tested way only because it's been proven in the past. So you remove your footprint with 
the, the basics, uh, you know, virtual machines, a lot of virtual machines make it very easily deployable based on the customer demands. Um, you, you start you, you start making arrangements and, and uh, accommodations for cloud computing, even though it is a remote mine, but you time that with the progression of your network. Obviously, you're not going to do cloud-based computing uh, on satellite. You're going to wait until microwave comes in just because of the latency factors. Uh, in addition to that, um, you, you basically start looking at other technologies and start making considerations for things like augmented reality, uh, things, for, things like artificial intelligence. Now, that hasn't been fully deployed, but that's been defined within the strategy. At the end of the day, uh, if you've got a good, solid network infrastructure that will handle the, the load that you're going to place on it from a traffic perspective and from a quality of service perspective, then you can start exploring opportunities with respect to IoT and with respect to um, uh, real-time data analytics. And you can go out and deploy sensors and cameras. I have always said the sensors and cameras everywhere, even places you don't know why. Uh, but the data being there allows you to then start uh, mining, no pun intended, for, for trends, uh, I mean for uh, um, opportunity within the realm of operation. Yeah, so I mean, you've you put, you put all these strategies and these new technologies in place, and is it a case now of you have to evaluate all the data that comes back before you can really go back and, and improve what, you, what you've already started? Uh, absolutely, that's what, that's what you need to do. Um, you're, you're very much in a, in a discovery phase. As to what do I do with all this data? You have to really think back to the business. And you have to push the business to say, listen, why don't you tell me what your pain points are? What would you like to be able to accomplish if I were to tell you three things that you need? If, you were to, if I were to ask you, what are the top three issues that you have? And, you know, would you define that for me from an operations perspective? And let me see if I, can, uh, if I can help you visualize that problem, number one, and two, uh, then, then model uh, the solution based on the data that we have available. It's all about adoption. It's all about defining what that business requirement is. So from that perspective, nothing has changed regardless of the fact that the technology is so so awesome and, and, and capable of doing so many different things, uh, you still have to define what your problem is. And, and that's where a lot of it is, is lost. The technology is just thrown into place because of the cool factor sometimes. And, you know, the real opportunity is missed in, in, in sitting down and presenting a real problem, a real solution with a real cost-benefit analysis. And so at this point in time, uh, deploying the technology is not the issue. The, the adoption and the actual practical application of what's possible is the issue. So you really have to define what your problem is. So for example, if you want to improve your, um, if you want to improve the efficiency and the productivity of your truck, well, you really have to define what your problem is. You know? Are you using your trucks? In, 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 in these cases, for example, it's not that the trucks are running slow. It's just that they're running at times that they don't need to be running. So you can, if you have the data, you can understand that. And then what you can do is you can bank those hours. Rather than have them operational, you can have your, your resources go back to training. Uh, they can you know, exercise more and, and relax some more. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, is it going to be a benefit because you're not wasting resources, whether it be personnel or fuel or, or anything else along those lines. So it, it all comes down to defining what your problem is. That's where the, the, the current challenge clearly remains. The technology is going to solve as many of the problems as you can define. So what's next for you, Greg? I mean, what, what projects are you working on at the moment, if, if you can tell us any more? Uh, sure. Right now, I'm, I'm working with, believe it or not, I'm, I'm working within the retail space and energy space. Um, and, you know, both industries are, and it's continuing with mining, of course, um, and very much like mining, and they're, they're, all, they're all eager to, to push the end on innovation. Um, retail more than anything else, uh, and on the retail side, is quite advanced. And what that allows me to do is take ideas and, and take lessons learned from various industries and, and you know, leverage them across the board. 
So retailers have really pushed on on um, believe it or not augmented reality and and you know what's been termed retail bots. Eugene uh, Roman from Canadian Tire is an excellent example of someone who is really pushing the envelope and to understand retail behavior and you know how to even influence that behavior through um, through, through real time analytics and through uh, a lot of psychological um, uh, I guess analysis and be, of, of retail behavior within stores at home in front of the computer whatever the case might be. Now, you, you stop and think, so how is that useful within the mining sector? Well, you start understanding the same way with the same technologies. You can determine behavior on the mine, physical behavior, and you can translate that to safety, and you can translate that to, to uh, risk reduction. So if you know where your people are, and you can heat map that, and you can predict and determine where they're going to be at a certain point in time, um, or, or model it based on a scenario that might take place. So, for example, a code one situation or code two, whatever the case may be, um, you can model that and you can predict some behavior. And then, then you can really drive efficiencies and determine that, for example, a lot of your employees are coming in um, to their muster points and they're still doing physical checks you know, with respect to a sheet on a, on a, on a, on a board. You, you, don't, you don't necessarily need uh, real-time data analytics to determine, you know, the next step for that. The next step for that is, why are we doing this paper-based? We should do it digital-based. You know, we have a tablet, and, and people have a scanning card or a bracelet or whatever the case might be uh, as part of their asset while they're at the mine, and you can basically monitor where they are and monitor if they're standing up or if they're lying down. Now, it's not an invasion of privacy uh, if everybody agrees to the fact that this is used for safety. And for heat mapping, for example, in those situations, you no longer have to go through a list of you know, 40, 50 people at each muster point, which takes about an hour to do, and then track down the one that, that isn't where their muster point is supposed to be. You can manage it on exception at that point, where people are just basically scanning themselves right through the system. Uh, the system being something very simple like an iPad and a scan card or a bracelet. And then you can turn very quickly, hey, we're missing John Smith. Where's John Smith? Oh, you know, he's appeared in, in, in sector 24 where he was supposed to be in 19. Okay, he's covered. We're fine. Um, you know, it's no longer a two-hour effort to determine where everybody is at any given time. That's just a simple, simple version. Um, and, and the technologies are out there. And I know most minds probably implemented something along those lines right now. But um, for, for, for those minds that haven't, they're still kind of either thinking about it or wondering why, you know, why they have to do it the manual way, but they're really not taking that step. Well, if you go across industries, you go back to retail, and I point on retail, not only do they know where their customers are, they know how their customers behave, they know the eye movements of customers and certain, uh, within certain companies. And so for me, the next step is to try to, try to take bits and pieces um, of, of technology and use cases where it's most appropriate across industries and, and really interleave them where it's appropriate. And of course, everything has to be, uh, uh, everything has to be a, a, a proper fit. You can't just do something again for the cool factor and then try to avoid that because there's, there's a lot of cool factor technologies and toys that are out there. But uh, you've, got to, you've got to take that smart and very methodical approach because what I'm working on right now. So my next, my next, uh, my next big push is going to be on augmented reality. And holographic imaging, because I think one of the issues is uh, that this is before the data analytics, uh, because what we need to do is we need to visualize the data that we do have and interpret that. I think that's a big, big step. If the common average day, average everyday user at the mind level can interpret the information that's there better than what they're doing right now, uh, that's, that's a huge step, and that's helpful. Okay, Greg. I think anyone who's going to be attending your presentation at, at Minds and Technology is obviously going to get a lot out of it and we look forward to seeing you there in Toronto on the 2nd to the 4th of October and thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much John, pleasure being here, thanks. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.